Okay, let's talk about topographic maps. So this is the introduction to topographic maps or topo maps for short. Uh, they have some other names, contour maps. Uh, basically what these are, if you haven't seen them before, is a way to represent uh, 3D features on a map. So I can look at a topographic map like this one behind these words and I can see that there's mountains, I can see that there's valleys and ridges and, and flatter places and steeper places, and that's what these maps are for. <clears throat> so it's a two-dimensional model of the Earth's surface uh, to represent sort of a 3D world. Uh, if you're a fan of the movie The Matrix, you know, they, they look at the code and they can see the matrix. Well, this is kind of like that. You know, you're, you're looking at these two-dimensional maps, but the more you look at them, the more you practice looking at them, you stop seeing a flat piece of paper and you start seeing uh, the, these topographic features, these, uh, these landforms. So the way they work uh, is there's contour lines on these maps and they, are, uh, they have values associated with them, which are elevations, basically the altitude above sea level. So here we have a small little island, and it's got three peaks on it. Now I could draw lines at every single 500 foot elevation, right? So everywhere there's 500 feet, I could go draw a line on these across these this island. So there's 500 feet, there's 1,000 feet, 1,500, and so on and so forth. Uh, now, if I look at this in a map form, so I look at it from the top down, it would then look like this if I kept these lines on there. So these are 500 feet, 1,000 feet, 1,500 feet, 2,000, 2,500, et cetera. And so this is a topographic map, or a contour map. Most people just call them topo maps for short. So, about them. So first off, they're all mostly, you know, the thing that makes this happen, make this, makes this work is the contour line. So it's always showing an equal amount of elevation. Anywhere you follow this little 500 foot line, it is always 500 feet on this line. Over here, not 500 feet. Over here, 500 feet. Up here, not 500 feet. Over here, 500 feet. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, and you can figure out the relief, which is the difference between uh, different contour lines. So the reason we have them is they show us changes in elevation. Uh, I've owned some property in, uh, in Madison County, and we have issues trying to keep roads from washing out uh, on this property. And so I've had to look at topographic maps to try and figure out, okay, where's a flat area that I could potentially put uh, you know, a dirt road through, or also where could I drop a road down? That's really the problems I run into is where could I drop a road down, uh, down this mountain? And you use topographic maps for that sort of thing. Um, if you're hiking out in the wilderness, topographic maps are extremely useful to try and figure out where you're at. Um, let's see, I've hiked a good portion of the Ozark Highlands Trail, and when you hike a huge amount of that, then you can't take all your water with you. You have to refill along uh, certain parts of the way. I was able to look at a topographic map and figure out where a stream might be after uh, a rainfall to try and figure out where some water could be. So there's a lot of different reasons uh, for topo maps um, and how useful they can be. The military certainly uses them. Uh, you know, feel free to Google. But in, in daily life, uh, if you spend a lot of time outside, you're going to run into these things. And they're, they're useful tools especially if you're into architecture or engineering or uh, building and that sort of thing, they're highly used. So along with the contour lines, we have something called the contour interval, which is basically the difference between each line. So the contour interval on this map, on this topo map over here, is 20 feet. That means between every line is 20 feet. So here I've got 500 feet, 520, 540, 560, 580, 600 feet. So not every line is labeled with the, uh, the altitude, uh, only every, you know, only occasionally are they. 
but the stuff that's in between, you can count up from these nearby what's called contour, uh, index contours, to figure out where you're at. So if this contour interval for this map were to be 10 instead of 20, then you would have double the amount of lines here, right? You'd have 500, 510, 520, 530, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 600. So you'd have a lot more lines in here if the contour interval were 10 feet. So the index contour, as I mentioned, is normally every fifth line uh, is printed a lot darker and it has the elevation uh, printed on it. So when you look at a topographic map, you'll find these lines that are a little more bold and you can follow them around to figure out exactly what the elevation is on them. So this one here, you know, 6,800 feet. So here, another topo map, here's the elevation. There's index contours here, 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 and here. However, those are somewhere listed off the map, but I can see on this, this section of the map, I can see that this is 2200, this is 3000. So I could figure out, you know, what these other index contours are. So let's see if I can figure out what the actual contour interval is on this map. So 2200, this one's 3000. So let's see, this is probably 2200, this is probably 2400. 2,600, 2,800, 3,000. <clears> okay, so I'm jumping up 200 feet to 20 index contour. That probably means these individual lines are what, 50 feet? So 2,200, 2,250, 2,300, 2,350, uh oh, 2,400. Uh oh, that doesn't fit. Well, maybe it's 40 feet. 40, 80, uh, 120, 100 and uh, uh, math, 160, and 200. So it looks like the contour interval is 40 feet. Let's see how I figured that out? Took me a second. So some rules for contours. Number one, contour lines never cross. They will never cross each other because if they cross each other, it, it doesn't quite make sense. Uh, if they, they can get really close to each other, if they're really close to on top of each other, you basically means you've got a sheer cliff. Uh, but they should never cross. Contours form closed loops. So you may have a map like this one right here, and you notice that these contours don't go all the way back around. But somewhere off this map, they go back around uh, on anything, anywhere. How is that possible? because we live on continents uh, and continents have edges. And if you go up 10 feet in elevation on any continent, somewhere that contour interval of 10 feet or still curl all the way around the continent and come back to you. Um, so even on huge, huge maps, eventually contours will form a closed loop. <clears throat> this one's super important. This one is used a lot. Uh, I will test you on this. The contours bend upstream, or they V upstream. So here, I've got a stream that bisects right here. So it's flowing from up here at these higher elevations and flowing downward. And you can see the contours are making these Vs upstream. So they point upstream. There's a the stream, and so there's those Vs. So you might be able to identify a place I mentioned before when I went on that hike, I was looking for places where streams might exist when, it, when it's wet. So even though there's not a stream really uh, put on this map, I can still see these Vs on the contours. And I know that, hey, if, enough, if there's enough rain, uh, the water will probably flow, flow down in this, this little gully here. Um, so I know that there may be you know, some kind of a stream there, even though it may not be on the map. So other rules, uh, the maximum possible elevation of a hill is one less than what can, the next contour should be. What do I mean by that? Well, let's just label the contours here. So if this is my last contour, and again, we're, we're looking at the side of our island, our very first island. Uh, this is not a map. 
this is a, a cross section, if you want to call it that. Uh, but we have 50 feet, 60 feet, 70 feet, 80 feet. There's no line for 90 feet. Therefore, the top of my mountain here, it, it can only be 89 feet or less. It can't be 90 feet. If it's 90 feet, then I've got another little contour line up here, or at least a dot. Same thing for going the other way. If I've got 90 feet, uh, let's, no, it says 90 up there, I should say 90 down here. Uh, if I'm in a valley, I can't go any lower than what the previous contour uh, is or I can't I can't go any you know the next contour interval I can't go 10 more down or or, or 20 more down uh, it's got to be just above what that next contour interval should be and it doesn't necessarily have to be 89 it could be 88 it could be 87 um, you know you may make the judgment based off how close you are to that, that contour line so there we go so 90, 80, 70, 60, uh, this can't be 50 down here because the contour line doesn't exist. The contour line would be down here. And so I at least have to be 51, if not, you know, 55 or 56 or whatever. So let's kind of use that process to uh, figure out this map. First off, let's just take a second to look at it. Uh, number one, contour interval tells us down here is 20 meters. So we're not even dealing with feet on this map, we're dealing in meters. Uh, we have the ocean over here. We've got a river that flows through here. We have what looks to be a railroad over here, and we've got three mountains, boom, 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 or three peaks anyway, and then some sort of uh, cross-section line. So what is the elevation of these peaks? Well, first off, let's go find an index contour. Let's start with this one up here. Here's 300, and we know the contour interval is 20 meters. So 300, 320, 340, 360, 380, and I've got I've got a dot up here, but I've got no next contour interval. So this this is somewhere above 380, and or somewhere between 380 and 400. Uh, oh, but just make them all straight. So 399 there, uh, 239 here. So again, 200, 220, and there's not quite a contour for the next one. So somewhere under 240. And this last one, oh, where's an index contour? Okay, well, I've got to go way back here to find my index contour. There's 100. I'll follow this contour line all the way over here. So 100, 120, 140, 160. So somewhere between 160 and 180, so maybe 179. There you go. So as I mentioned before, closely spaced contours basically means you have a much deeper uh, incline versus when the contours are farther apart, it's a little more gradual. So the, the cross section of this or the side view of this would be more gradual and then it gets really steep. So if you were to go hiking around here, uh, you know, it'd be easier to hike up in this section than it would down into here because it's just such a steep hillside. And again, look, there's a stream. Look, it's veeing upstream. So I know this stream is flowing from up here and it's flowing down here. So again, really closely spaced contour lines. I know that this is a very steep, uh, basically a wall here, like that. And then on the opposite side, we have widely spaced contours, uh, means things are uh, flatter. So here we have a really flat section. If you were a developer, and uh, I actually deal with this a lot in my day job, um, because people like to put all sorts of things on their property where they have lower lying areas in their, their property. They want to fill that in so they can flatten it out and, and maybe sell it. But uh, if you're, let's say, you've got a million bucks and you want to build a golf course. And, okay, here's the topo map of this area. You find this land, it's for sale. You look at the topo map and you go, well, I'm not going to put a golf course over here. There's too much relief over here. It's too steep. But maybe, maybe right in here I could build my golf course. So here, this looks like, you have to look closely at this, but if you look closely at this, you find that these areas are actually the higher areas out here where all these contour lines are, and this is flat in the bottom. And this is what that looks like. 
So really steep and then flat on the bottom. Uh, depressions, and you don't see this too much, uh, but it's where you kind of have a, uh, an area that's steepening, and then at the top you have depression. So you have to sort of, it's hard to draw that, so there's a special uh, a contour line that is drawn to <coughs> represent a depression. And a place you might see this uh, is maybe a pond or volcanoes, <coughs> where uh, you have a contour line that has these little hash marks on it. Something else we see on topo maps besides uh, just a lot of different features, like before I showed you, there's a railroad and there's streams. And, um, <clears throat> one thing we see are benchmarks. And benchmarks, uh, well, they look like this. And if you ever go out hiking or go to national parks or something, sometimes you'll see these things. But they'll define uh, a point at, to a certain elevation. So I see on this benchmark, uh, I wonder where this is. Evans, Mount Evans maybe. But it looks like it's 14,258 feet above sea level. Pretty tall mountain. That's basically the uh, the height of the mountains over uh, and the Rockies outside of Denver. In fact, I wonder if this is one of those mountains. But anyway, you can find these uh, on topo maps and they'll be labeled either as an X and then they'll put the elevation. So you'd see an X and you'd see 14,258. Or you'd see BM for benchmark, and it'll have the elevation. So here's a topo map, and there's a little BM here. A lot of times you'll find them at the top of mountains, uh, and so there's the elevation right there. And again, in this area, there's a little benchmark. Uh, if you guys end up watching my GIS uh, GPS sort of lecture. I actually talk about a benchmark I had to go and find uh, for some work I did up in Alaska. And it was sort of, uh, it was put there, I think, to help guide the installation of an airfield. So they don't always represent high points. Uh, sometimes they can be put in for, for other purposes as well. So these topo maps also have scales. Uh, and the scale is to represent or is to indicate the distance on the map compared to the distance in the real world. So I could have a 1 to 1,000 scale, which would mean that one inch on that map equals 1,000 inches in real life. And also it doesn't have to be inches. It could be a foot. So let's say I'm looking at a, at a big map in front of me the size of my desk. Um, I could say, okay, one foot, boom, on that map is one foot. There's one foot in real life that represents 1,000 feet. So on the maps, on these topo maps, they're usually at the bottom of the map, and they'll look like this. So there's the scale, 1 to 24,000. You sort of assign your own, you know, you can assign your own uh, um, measurements to this. So this could be centimeters, it could be inches, it's whatever you're measuring with on your map. Also, you'll see these scale bars that can kind of help you out. So on the map, this equals a mile, or here's feet, or here it is in kilometers. And again, there's the contour interval. It's also written down here. And they'll tell you uh, where the information came from. So map scales, they're written like this. One, two, you know, they have a little uh, colon here. 63,360. Why this scale? I mean, it's kind of a weird number to draw a map at. Uh, and most maps I look at are actually, uh, they're, they're, the scale is, is less than, or sorry, it's technically bigger. It's like 1 to 24,000 or 12,000 or something like that. But why you'll see maps like this is because 1 inch on the map equals 63,360. And it just so happens to be that 63,360 inches are in a mile. So it can help you with figuring things out. It means when you look at that map, an inch on that map happens to be a mile in real life. It's just that the math works out that way. Don't get too hung up on that if that was confusing. Uh, something else we can figure out using topo maps. So if you're an engineer and you want to put in, let's say, a road or 
a railroad, and you know that a railroad can only be, you know, five degrees, uh, have, a, have an incline of five degrees, otherwise the, the train will start slipping and it won't be able to make it up the hill, uh, you can calculate gradients. So you can pick a point on your topo map that's maybe right, I don't have a topo map up, but pick a, pretend this whole thing's a topo map. Uh, I can pick a point right here and then pick a point over here and I can look at the change in elevation. So I can look at the contour lines over here and maybe it's, you know, 100 feet. And over here it's 200 feet. And let's say the distance between these are a mile. Well, that's 100 feet in elevation over, what is it, 5,280 feet distance. So I could do the math and figure out my gradient. And I could do some basic trigonometry and figure out uh, how much of an incline that is and then say, oh, no. I cannot put my railroad here. It is too steep. I must put it somewhere else. So basically you can do the you can do simple math on these maps using the contour intervals, using those elevations uh, that they represent to help you figure out uh, the gradient of something, which will help you decide whether you want to build something there or not. And this is basically what I just said. So anyway, that's uh, all I've got for uh that if you have any questions let me know